Okay, so to begin with, in the fall, winter period, um, we'll have flocks of turkeys that are segregated by sex. So there will be hen flocks and gobbler flocks, so they're not really mingled up too much. And this is simply a time of maintenance and survival. Um, the turkeys main goal during this time period is to make it to the spring so that they can survive, uh, reproduce. As far as the diet of turkeys go, there's a lot of, a lot of studies that have been done, food habit studies that have been done with, on turkeys, uh, seeing which foods they prefer, uh, which foods they eat. And turkeys will eat just about anything. Um, they've been killed with crawfish in their crops. They, there's not much that a turkey won't eat. What's important isn't so much feeding turkeys as it is the relationship of food to habitat. Um, and the more important um, diet item, the most important diet item is actually for the poles. Um, but it, as far as adult turkeys go, whether it's plant or animal, if, it can be a, if they can digest it and get it into their mouth and their throat, they'll eat it. Um, it's roughly a throughout the year, it's roughly about 75% plant matter and about 25% animal, animal matter looked at over the entire year. Um, during the fall winter uh, period, hard mass, the consumption of hard mass, which is things such as acorns and beech nuts, increases become available and they'll increase in the diet of tur turkeys a great deal. Um, there's also some, some soft mass that's available during the early fall, such as uh, muscadine grapes and dogwood berries. Those are used heavily. Um, as far as the movements during the uh, fall winter period, these flocks will, over the day to day range, will, will cover about 50 to 100 acres. Uh, but they may suddenly just pick up and move to uh, more than a mile to another location, and that's to take advantage of a food source that becomes available or is where they are. They run out of acorns or whatever it is they've been feeding on, and they'll, they'll just pick up and move a long, long ways to take advantage of other food sources. And of course, during years where we have poor acorn production, movements are going to be a lot greater because they're just moving around the landscape, finding something to eat. Um, general habitat needs and use for this period. Uh, in the fall and winter, turkeys will start using much more forested areas, less than open areas. During the spring, this of course is the onset of the mating season. This is when the courtship, courtship behavior will begin. Um, you'll have gobbling, strutting, drumming, and fighting among the males. That'll increase as spring comes in. And the hen flocks will break up during this time. And the hens will, will disperse or, or move to areas where they're going to nest. Generally speaking, the, the hens on average, are, uh, juvenile hens on average, move two to three times farther than adults and usually nest outside their former home ranges. And this is one of the ways in which turkeys can repopulate areas where they're, they're absent from because they're, you think about it, after four or five years, you've got turkeys moving out a long ways every time those juvenile hens completely move out of their, the range where they were born. And during the spring, there's a shift from forested areas that they were using during the fall and winter, the hev heavily forested areas, to more open areas because of the habitat needs. Um, for nesting, they, they'll nest in shallow uh, depressions. You know, you can see here, it's just an area. This can't, doesn't necessarily have to be in thick cover. They'll, they'll just make a depression in, in some leaves sometimes like this that's fairly open. Um, but Generally speaking, the nesting habitat is moderately dense, low-growing vegetations. Um, and you're not going to find that as much in the heavily forested areas because the sunlight's not getting to the ground. So that's why the turkeys are moving out of, using the forested areas much less during the, the breeding season as the breeding season approaches and moving into the more open areas so that they can get a better habitat for, for what they're using it for. And you can see why the, the hen, when she's sitting on this nest right here, you can see her eye right there. She's much more uh, concealed than if she were nesting out in the open, into an open uh, area with no vegetation. Clutch size is usually 10 to 12 eggs. Um, nest success uh, of the nests that are, that are laid, those, they're usually less than 50% of those hatch. However, and the reason being would be an abandonment, either they're disturbed, the, the area is destroyed, or they're predated upon. However, they will re-nest if the nest is destroyed. Um, 
there is increased during this time of increased mortality of hens. Uh, hens experience a drop in their survival rate um, because during that incubation period, they're more exposed to predation because they're sitting in one spot, they're building up scent, and that's why that you know that visual obscurity helps them to uh, to increase their survival during that time. That's why they like to nest in those areas. Um, their diet. Uh, uh, of the adult turkeys during this time, they're going to be an increased use of animal matter uh, for the protein. Um, you know, particularly for the hens, they need that protein for production of the eggs. But more, more than that, it's just that the, during the fall and winter, that animal matter, those bugs that they can, they can pick up and eat just aren't available. And during the spring, as those things become available, they eat more of them. And of course, the green vegetation, they'll pluck, pluck green vegetation and eat it. And then, of course, the soft mass becomes more available during this time as well. And those are the berries and, and that sort of thing. When the nests hatch, um, the young poults are, are born flightless um, but fully feathered. Um, and they're relatively mature compared to some of the, the other uh, birds. If you, have, you know, the altricial birds are the ones like the songbirds that the mother will bring the bugs to them or the worm to them and regurgitate to them. Animals like uh, turkeys, quail, and ducks are born precocial, which means that they're able to, to, they're fully feathered. They can't fly yet, but they can move around. Um, and they're, they're very mobile, but they're very little as well. And they'll leave the nest within uh, 24 hours. And even though they're, they're relatively mature, they got full, you know, they're, all their feathers, they can feed on their own, they're still relying on the hen to lead them around and to protect them from. Uh, to, give, to alarm them at the presence of danger and also to provide them protection from the elements and, and other predators. Um, they're, not, they're not running around on their own feeding. They have to, the hen is still raising them, even though she doesn't have to uh, deliver the food directly to their mouth. In the brood rearing period, this is the most critical time for managing for wild turkeys for, in determining Wild turkey population numbers, the brood rearing time, what happens during that period is the most critical time. Poult survival, the survival of the young turkeys can be very, very low in, poor, in areas of poor brood habitat. Um, hen survival is, is also going to decrease uh, during this time even more so than during the nesting because of the areas that they're going to have to use to find the bugs that they need um, is going to expose the hen to more predation. The hen survival can be very, can be drop dramatically. As the poults age, um, survival increases. And it's not just as the poults age, it's as they mature, as they get bigger. And when they get up to flight size, their, their survival goes, a lot, uh, goes through the roof compared to what it was when they were young. The diets of the poults is insects. Um, there's a gradual transition to more plant matter, but you know the turkey poult is born about that big and in a very short period of time, it has to grow a lot so that it can fly and get away from predators, get up into the trees, get up into the shrubs. They need a lot of protein. So in the first uh, part of their life, that's all they eat is bugs. And as they age, there'll be a gradual transition to more plant matter as they, the need for the, the high protein subsides. And then in brood habitat, when we're talking about managing land for wild turkeys, and providing high quality uh, brood habitat, sufficient quantity, is probably the most important management activity you, you can undertake to increase wild turkey populations. And it's often the limiting factor, meaning that no matter what you do, it's not going to matter until you increase that brood habitat. You can plant a bunch of you know, other stuff that's, that's not increasing the brood habitat, and it's not going to help any until you get that brood habitat where it needs to be. And what's important when we talk about the brood habitat for turkeys is composition and structure. Um, composition is going to be uh, plants that attract bugs. So what we call phytophagous insects. And that's just a fancy way of saying plants that eat green plant material. I mean bugs that eat green plant material. Um, such as grasshoppers and that sort of thing, um, and we want what we want is for these these plants to be fairly tall so that they can conceal the turkey pole and have a lot of these bugs in them, 
but at the same time, you want them to have bare ground. So underneath these plants right here, it's, it's not bare. When we talk about bare ground for, for foraging, it's not <coughs> disking it all under at one time. So that, you know, we want the cover ahead so that the turkeys can, can have visual concealment and we have the bugs that are eating on the uh, plant material. But down at the ground level, we, want, we don't want a lot of thatch built up because you remember when the turkeys first hatch out, they're not real big. The, the easier it is for them to move through these areas and feed, the sooner they can get filled up, the sooner they can kind of hide for a little while and, the, and not be as exposed to predation. But on top of that, the better, at, the, better the area is at feeding the young turkey poults in a timely manner and with highly uh, <laughs> nutritious foods, the faster they're going to grow. And as those turkey poults grow, their survival increases, especially when they get up to the flighting stage. Um, another thing that tends to be fairly important is the distance to nesting habitats. So where the turkeys are nesting, um, they're, the further they have to travel to get to the, the areas where they're going to raise the brood, <coughs> survival can be decreased with distance from that nesting habitat because they're, they may be moving across areas that are, that are, in which they're more exposed to predation. Um, I'm running through this fairly quick. Um, because I wanted to, um, I, I was, we got started a little late. The last thing I wanted to talk about was the history of wild turkey in, in Alabama. Um, populations at the time of settlement, you know, we don't, we didn't, we don't have census information from that time, and we didn't. We, but according to historical accounts and what we know about how uh, Native Americans managed the landscape here and what the landscape looked like. The populations were probably pretty abundant at the time of settlement. Um, after settlement, there was a fairly steady decline um, until the early 20th century where turkey populations were extremely low um, compared to what they were at the time of settlement. Part of this reason was habitat destruction, um, but probably more importantly was over-harvest. Um, turkey were, you know, it's a fairly big bird. You could feed your family for a little while off that turkey that you shot. And some people would shoot turkeys and sell them for meat, uh, market hunting. And this, this decimated turkey populations, not just in Alabama, but throughout the range. Um, restoration, part of that was, has been habitat restoration. Uh, probably most importantly, the uh, protection of birds. Uh, has because the bigger problem was more, more most likely the, the over harvest of birds. Protection of, of especially of hens has led to, to increases in this. Now, one of the reasons I wanted to bring up this history of wild turkey in Alabama was back here at the early part of the 20th century, not just in Alabama but in many places, the only places you could find turkeys were very remote areas that were typically hardwood bottomlands, large expanses. <laughs> of swamp. And why do you think that would be? Because you think those areas are just the best places for turkeys? It's because we couldn't get to them is why. But that was one of the reasons that led the people to, to think, the early wildlife biologists thought that we needed big, we needed big, big areas, large, large expanses of close canopy hardwoods, um, Bottomland hardwoods to be able to have, you know, a thousand acres or more to be able to have turkeys because that was the only place they were. But it turns out that's not the case. Since, have, since turkeys have been restored, they're, in, they're located, we can find turkeys in just about any kind of habitat scenario you can imagine, even pine forests, suburbs. Um, they're, they're very adaptable birds, extremely adaptable. I'd say that, you know, compared to... <clears throat> To, to a lot of our, our wildlife, turkeys are, are not very sensitive, not as sensitive to the to landscape differences and being able to hang on. Now we can increase turkey populations without a question through management. We can make those areas more conducive to turkey populations. But the, the biggest thing I wanted to, to to use this was to explain that that turkeys are not an old growth hardwood bird. And as the this uh, seminar carries on through the other talks. Y'all hear that, that actually large expanses of hardwoods are not ideal turkey, turkey habitat.